Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Edwards. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon here in Southwest Michigan and medical director of surgical services at Spectrum Health Lakeland. Thank you for joining me today. While we're waiting for some people to log on, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been at Lakeland for over 28 years and I grew up in New York, went to college in Massachusetts and medical school in Syracuse. And after graduating from medical school, I did my internship at Portsmouth Naval Hospital and residency at the National Naval Medical Center at Bethesda, Maryland. I had the privilege of serving in the Navy for nine years, and in that time, uh, had many adventures in the Navy that perhaps we can talk about. After leaving the Navy, I came to Lakeland, had been in practice here for 28 years, and have loved every opportunity that I've had at Lakeland. Now to get started, Let's watch a brief video about today's topic. In the way of disclosures, uh, I'm the Medical Director of Surgical Services at Lakeland. I serve on several board committees at Lakeland. I'm on the board of the Berrien Health Department. But most importantly, I don't have any financial relationships with any industry, and therefore there are no financial conflicts in this presentation. So when we look at shoulder replacement, today what I want to do is talk about shoulder anatomy talk to you about what is arthritis, talk about the treatment options, and I want to talk to you about the difference between a total shoulder and a reverse total shoulder, and talk to you about what you should expect if you do have one of these procedures. So if we talk about shoulder joint anatomy, I think it's pretty simple. The shoulder is like a golf ball on a tee. So very, very big ball and very, very small socket. So if we look at the x-rays of a normal shoulder, which we can see, the slide on the right really does look like a golf ball on a golf tee. So the reason that it's been designed that way is so that we would enjoy significant range of motion of the shoulder. And if we look at the slide on the left, we can see again the ball fits in the socket. And above that socket, there's a shelf of bone that's actually made up of the collarbone and another bone that we call the acromion, and sandwiched in that clear space is one of the tendons of the rotator cuff. So this is another graphic of the anatomy. Again, it shows the ball. The ball is the top of the arm bone, which we call the humerus. The socket is a portion of the shoulder blade that we call the scapula. And there are a lot of muscles, and what this slide depicts are the four muscles of your rotator cuff. And basically what a rotator cuff does is it holds the ball in the socket. But each of those muscles, in addition to holding the ball in the socket, have individual functions, such as rotating your arm in or out or lifting your arm from the side. So what exactly is shoulder arthritis? Well, shoulder arthritis is basically a degenerative condition that involves a loss of cartilage over bone so that the bones rub on one another. So you wear cartilage off the ball and cartilage off the socket. And basically this results in inflammation and pain and stiffness and motion loss. And basically what it results in is impairment of function. So if we look at these two slides of arthritis, we can see what arthritis really is. The slide on the left we see that we don't see any space between the ball and the socket. So again, loss of cartilage over bone, so bone rubs on bone. The slide on the right is even worse arthritis. The, the arthritis is so severe that the ball no longer is round, it's flat, and that's very severe arthritic condition. This is an arthroscopic view of arthritis. So in arthroscopy, what we do is we put a scope in the shoulder, and what we can see here is that there is no cartilage remaining, and what we see is bone with a dabbling of some cartilage. So what happens when you get arthritis of the shoulder? Typically, people have pain. They lose range of motion. They feel crepitus. What is crepitus? Crepitus feels like a ratcheting sensation of the shoulder, and the shoulder is very unique in this. When my patients come to me with arthritis, they will say that their shoulder is very noisy. 
and they'll feel this toothache sensation. And I think the picture on the right really depicts what a lot of patients feel like when they have shoulder arthritis. So when we talk about shoulder arthritis, we talk about treatment options. We try exercises to maintain range of motion. When we talk about activity modification, what we want to do is we want to try to minimize overhead activity and heavy lifting overhead. We also want to reduce heavy lifting with our arms out at a distance. If you're going to carry things and you've got arthritis, you want to hold those objects closer to your body to put less strain on the shoulder. You can take medications such as anti-inflammatories, Aleve, Advil, Mobic, those kind of medicines. Physical therapy has a place in shoulder arthritis for maximizing range of motion and decreasing pain. Sometimes we'll inject the shoulder with cortisone. This can be very effective in relieving pain, but we understand that an injection doesn't change the arthritis. It just reduces the inflammatory response to the arthritis. And when those conservative measures fail, then we talk about joint replacement. Now there are some interesting uh, alternative treatments that I've stumbled upon. One is things like reflexology, which you can see on the right. Apparently, if you push on the bottom of your foot, some people believe this will help your shoulder arthritis pain. And other more homeopathic remedies on the left include hot and cold compresses and turmeric, which I see very often with our patients. <laughs> but when they all fail, we have to make a decision. Are we gonna live with this quality of life or are we gonna try to correct the problem? And if we're gonna try to correct the problem, the solution is a total shoulder replacement. So what exactly is a shoulder replacement? Well, in a shoulder replacement, we replace the worn out socket and we place the worn out ball. And this can be seen in the slide on the right. So the way we do this is you go to the operating room we generally do this with two types of anesthetics. First, you get a block, and a block is an injection, and what that does is that reduces the post-operative pain for up to 18 to 24 hours, and then you go to sleep. So you're not awake during the surgery. We put you in this position, which we call the beach chair position. The surgeons, as depicted on the right, use space suits, and this is to minimize infection and all patients receive intravenous antibiotics. This is the incision that's made in the shoulder. I'd have to say this is not a minimally invasive surgery. You're gonna have an incision. We do the best that we can to sew up that incision to minimize the cosmetic deformity, and most people have a very reasonable scar after this surgery. Now when we do total shoulder replacement, we try not to cut through muscles. What we do is we divide the interval between the deltoid muscles and the pectoralis muscles, and you can see that interval is depicted on the arrow. And then we put retractors in. Now to get into the shoulder, we have to make an incision in one of the tendons of the rotator cuff that we call the subscapularis tendon. And that's what tenotomy means, cutting the tendon but we put stitches in that and we repair it when we come back to closure. Then what we do is we expose the ball. The ball is known as the humeral head. We remove bone spurs, which are known as osteophytes, and then we make a cut in the humerus to get rid of the ball. And we have guides that allow us to do this very precisely so that we minimize the risk of dislocation after a total shoulder replacement. After that, we expose the socket, and on the socket, we place a component that we call a glenoid component, and this fits directly on your socket, and this is embedded in the socket either with screws, as you can see in the center slide, or cemented as we cement the one on the right. Then we put the stem down the canal of the arm bone, which we call the humerus, and on top of the stem is a ball, and then we put the ball against the socket. 
Now, postoperatively, everybody gets a shoulder immobilizer and typically will use this for several weeks. So what should you expect? Well, the first six weeks, you're going to sleep with the sling and you're going to use the sling when you do act outdoor activities. We're going to avoid external rotation of the shoulder because we want that tendon that we repaired to heal. And our goals really center on range of motion restoration or moving the shoulder. We don't worry too much about strength at this point. And most patients notice that the pain improves very quickly after a shoulder replacement. Now beyond six weeks, we get rid of the sling, we continue to work on range of motion, but we also start working on strengthening. And I think it's very important to understand that patients continue to improve after a shoulder replacement for up to 18 to 24 months, as long as you do your home exercises. This is a great operation that restores function significantly and reduces pain. So what is a reverse shoulder replacement? And on this slide, I've tried to explain that uh, a conventional shoulder replacement is what we just discussed. We replace the ball, we put something in the socket. With a reverse shoulder replacement, we put the ball where the socket was, and that's why it's called a reverse shoulder replacement. So a little background on that. It sort of reverses the normal anatomic design. The ball's where the socket was, the socket's where the ball was. It's one that traditionally is best reserved in older patients, but it's a very interesting operation that was developed by the French and it's really improved things for a lot of patients. So current indications for reverse shoulder replacement include rotator cuff arthropathy. What does that mean? Well, that means you have shoulder arthritis, but you don't have a rotator cuff because you've had a rotator cuff injury in the past. This is very common, and we'll get into detail about this. This is a very common operation used in shoulder fractures. In fact, I would say in our practice, we do this at least once to two times a week for older patients with shoulder fractures. And this was a problem that we did not have a solution for until the reverse shoulder replacement came in. We use it in some patients with arthritis, and we also use it in patients that have had a failed previous regular shoulder replacement. So let's talk about rotator cuff arthropathy first. Super common. On the slide on the left, we can see the picture of a shoulder. You've got the ball, you've got the socket, but one thing you'll notice is that the ball now rests directly under that shelf of bone in front of it. And in the previous normal x-ray of the shoulder, there was space there from the rotator cuff. But when you lose your rotator cuff, the ball migrates up. The right slide is an MRI. And what this shows is the same thing. Basically, the ball has moved up out of the socket because the rotator cuff is no longer present. So when we do this operation, we basically remove the ball. We put a base plate where the socket was with a ball on that. And the stem goes down the canal, and it has a socket on it. This is a shoulder fracture. And what I've tried to depict here on the upper left-hand slide is an x-ray where the ball has completely displaced from its position against the socket. The lower left-hand slide is a CT of this, which shows this break very dramatically. And the slide in the lower right shows a reverse shoulder replacement to address this. So these are the pieces of a reverse shoulder replacement. So we do the operation the same way we do a regular shoulder replacement. That's the incision. We expose the ball. We make a cut in the ball with this cutting guide so we can see the cutting guide and the saw making the cut. We ream down the canal of the bone. Then what we do is we place this base plate on the socket as you can see in this slide. And to fix that to the socket, we put screws. 
Then we put one of these balls on top of that base plate. So again, the ball is now on the socket. Then we insert the component into the stem of the shoulder. And voila, we have a completed reverse total shoulder replacement. So what I'd like to do now is address questions that you might have either about traditional shoulder replacement or reverse shoulder replacement. But additionally, I'd be happy to answer any questions about shoulder arthritis as well.